Have you ever taken a look at the healthy and diet section on the menu of your neighborhood Chinese takeout place? One of the dishes on there is Buddha's Delight. Since this is the first episode in the new Dragon Year and it's a custom for Cantonese people to eat vegetarian for the first meal in the new year, in today's episode, we will learn about Buddha's Delight, Lo Hon Zai, and how it evolved over the years. Hi, my name is Christy and this is the American Chinese Food Show. Vegetarian food has a spot in Cantonese cuisine because of Buddhist vegetarianism. Many Buddhists eat vegetarian on the 1st and 15th every month, kind of like our meatless Mondays. Legend ahead is that the 18 arhats, Lo Hon, the disciples of Buddha combined the vegetarian dishes they had received from door to door ems into a single dish and offered it to Guan Yin, the goddess of compassion, creating the dish. But legend is just a legend. One of the oldest documentations we have on Buddha's delight is from the book Peng Zhao Ho Tam from the Southern Song Dynasty in the year 1119. It says in Guangzhou, rice offerings to monks are called Lo Hon vegetarian dish. It shows that it originally might not refer to any specific dish at all. So how did it become what it is today? I tracked down a few recipes from before the turn of the last century, the beginning of the 20th century, 1960s, and contemporary times in the oldest recorded Cantonese cookbook, Truth in Deliciousness, for Buddha's delight, the ingredients are fried tofu, dried tofu sticks, ginkgo nut, dried oysters, shiitake mushrooms, raw bamboo shoots, wood ear mushrooms, fresh lily bulbs, and straw mushrooms. Soak all the dried ingredients, stew with water and double steam in a pot with preserved turnip and a lot of cooked oil. This recipe was from 1887. Xiu Wang Chen, the mysterious cookbook writer mentioned so many times on this channel, also included a recipe for Buddhist delight in his 1917 The Chinese Cookbook. We already know Chen struggled a little bit with translating the terms to English since he was really the first. Bean cake, which is tofu, white nuts, ginkgo nuts, fungus, probably wood ear mushrooms, bean steak, bamboo shoots, and dried mushrooms. The ingredients are almost exactly the same as the 1887 recipe, just without the fresh lily bulbs, which might be hard to get in the United States, and dried oysters, making it a true vegetarian dish. Somewhere along the line back home, there was an emergence of a quote-unquote standard called three mushrooms and six ears, probably having something to do with the new luxurious variation of Buddha's delight that started showing up in Guangzhou around the 1920s, called Ding Wu Lo Hon Zai. Ding Wu is a big Buddhist temple town. Three mushrooms are button mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, and straw mushrooms. Six ears are snow ear, m ear, yellow ear, osmanthus ear, wood ear, and rock tripe. It is said that the combination of all these fungi create a meaty flavor better than meat itself. Here is the Buddha's delight recipe from the most famous vegetarian restaurant Choi Gun Hong in Guangzhou back in the day from 1959. While many ingredients remain the same, we see the addition of straw mushrooms and yellow ear. We also see the addition of vegetables, young vegetables like choi sum, which also became a standard for decades to come. Unlike what you could get in proper vegetarian restaurants, home-cooked versions stay very close to what we saw in the 19th century. This recipe is from the family section of a Hong Kong newspaper from 1960. It says every housewife knows how to make Buddha's delight. Main ingredients are nothing more than the usual. Dry black sea moss, dried tofu sticks, string beans, dry lily buds, which is different from fresh lily bulbs, woodier, vermicelli, shiitake, bamboo shoots, and ginkgo nuts. The new ingredients are dry black sea moss and dry lily buds. We even see this in the United States. We have probably the earliest English recipe for Buddha's Delight here by Grace Jiachu from 1967. Grace was a Shanghai-born, uh, Wellesley educated, and wife of a high nationalist government official in Washington, D.C. Her recipe is surprisingly very close to the one in the Hong Kong newspaper, perhaps due to her access to new trends back home. 
She wrote that it usually combines 10 to 12 different kinds of vegetables, both fresh and dried. Interestingly, there's no tofu. Instead, she uses vegetable sticks, which is a meat substitute usually made of wheat gluten. While Grace specified the key ingredients in Buddha's delight, she made some compromises with the side vegetables like snow peas, water chestnuts, and carrots, probably because it's familiar to American eaters, shaping a lot of what the dish is today in the United States. Buddhist delight started popping up in the United States around the 60s. One of the earliest mentions is from Joyce Chen, whom we covered in a previous episode, during a fundraiser dinner hosted at her restaurant in Cambridge in 1964. According to the news article, Buddhist delight contained lotus roots, soybean skins, bamboo strips, pea pots, water chestnuts, carrots, and more, and it hasn't really changed that much since then. Here are some online ordering menus from the United States. At the Orient Odyssey in New Jersey, under the Weight Watchers steamed specials section, Buddha's Delight is a healthful and colorful mixture of snow peas, broccoli, mushroom, bean curd, eggplant, carrots, and baby corn. The takeout restaurant spin in this is that many also offer a choice of sauce. Brown sauce, which is teriyaki garlic sauce, is the one used in the dish. Uh, fish fragrant eggplants, white sauce, and a fermented black bean sauce. You probably automatically assume the American Buddhist delight you get from takeout places in the United States is not very quote unquote authentic. But this is one of the American Chinese dishes that kind of evolved in a similar way with its counterpart back home, probably due to health preferences as well as changes in production. Many of the ingredients mentioned above with the six mushrooms in six years have become increasingly rare or even disappeared over time. In fact, the recipe for Buddha's delight from Lee Kum Ki, the Hong Kong sauce company, is a great demonstration of how the dish is cooked now. Dry shiitake mushrooms, snap peas, carrots, water chestnut, bamboo shoots, uh, fresh black fungus, which is woodier, dry bean curd, straw mushrooms, baby corns, and Chinese cabbage. The, the only main difference is you can get Buddha's Delight, a lot Honzai, in a thick roux on top of crispy noodles or braised ifu noodles, um, yi min, as well as over rice in Hong Kong and Guangzhou. So next time when you order from a Chinese takeout place, don't dismiss the dish Buddhist Delight. I would even argue that the American Buddhist Delight dish adheres more to the original Buddhist value of just making what you already have. That's it for today's episode. If you like our content, subscribe to the channel. See you soon.